Oh, my beloved Granny Square, we just love them, don't we? I personally have a major thing for Granny Squares, and I always have. Just what makes them so darn fun and awesome. Today I'll throw out a few ideas I have on the subject. And at the end of this video, I have a great list I found in this 70s Granny Square book from my extensive library, so that will be fun. But mostly I'll be making my beautiful, earthy, rainbow Granny Square poncho. I love how it turned out. Somewhere I saw a blanket with this idea of changing one color in each square to create a rainbow and I decided I had to make a poncho. With browns of course, because that's my favorite, gotta put my twist on it. First I'll show you exactly how I planned my design and how I estimated how much yarn to buy and all that. Then we'll make approximately 1 million squares and I will show you a couple tricks there as well. Then I'll join him up and finish my dream poncho. I actually started this project like a year ago as my first attempt at a crochet video, which didn't work at all. So I've been saving this and I'm really excited to finally finish it and wear it. As usual, see the description for links to my blog post and complete patterns in my shop. For this project, it's pretty much the best project you can do because all you need is yarn and a hook. Hooray! Now, I do want to talk about the yarn for a second. I chose to use Karen Simply Soft, and um, the reason why I chose this yarn, and this was actually my first time using it, but I wanted something that was inexpensive because I knew I needed a lot of it, um, but also soft on the skin. So I was really looking for like a deal more than a, you know, the quality of fibers, you know. So this was on sale. I bought some. I liked the colors. That's mostly why I went with it, I think. And it was on sale. This is six ounces. I know it was under $4 a skein, probably three fifty dollars a skein or something on sale. You know, a good Joanne sale. Um, I liked it so much when I received it, I ordered some more while it was still on sale because I really liked it. So yeah, I like it. And just talking about the colors, just real quick on why I picked the colors I picked. So I'm going to talk more about my design and how much I needed and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to do a rainbow, but I didn't want to do like a standard crayon rainbow because I just don't. I wanted to pick colors that I wear. So a darker orange and then a very pale like maize color because I can't stand yellow. And so it's the one I could stand. So I didn't really look at necessarily how the colors went together. Although I think they're fine. I mostly just wanted it to match my clothes. The blue, this is pretty much my favorite color. And um, I went with like a dark burgundy kind of red because I'm not a big fan of red. And um, the one that bugs me the most is the green because it's so minty. But it was kind of the best green I could find um, of what they had. And um, it does kind of match some of the colors I wear. And when you mix them with the other colors, it's not so bad. But that's probably the one that bugs me the most, that green. And then for, well, in the square, you saw it. It's mostly brown and then some cream, this cream color, which is, I don't know. I don't really give you the names of stuff, do I? Oh, whatever. Bone. Bone. <laughs> So um, those are the colors I went with, and that is why. Um, and it's a number four medium, but you know how that goes. Um, there's a big difference between something like this that's super soft, is thinner than, say, the um, Super Saver stuff I use for my beer can hats, which these this one has a recommended hook of, I think, uh, H, which is actually what I was going to use because I made this um, a long time ago. I forgot which hook I used. So I used the H, and it ended up being too big which is fine. It's squishy. It's a little stretchy. Um, it definitely will give you a bigger square than the G, right? And normally I probably would have gone with that just because it's efficient, you know, to make a slightly bigger square and I don't mind it squishy. However, for this particular project, I didn't want it to stretch out of shape because it you put a, this big of a piece of clothing, it's heavy, you know, it's going to pull a lot anyway. So I wanted this. Now this is much tighter this is just one hook difference right but it is you can feel the firmer it's still squishy but it's firmer it's not as stretchy it's going to keep its shape better than this one would you know 
it's just a personal preference. I'm not saying one's right or wrong, but for this project, this is the choice that I made was to go smaller. So you'll see um, later in the video, the moment when I realized I used the wrong size hook. <laughs> now, oh, I was gonna mention also that um, I do like this yarn. However, I have had a lot of trouble with it splitting, if that's something that irritates you. I'm not really sure um, if a bigger hook helps maybe. And maybe the fact that I'm using such a small hook, it does catch up a lot, but if that really bothers you, you might want to go with something else. I don't know. If you have a favorite yarn that you think is like cheap and soft, <laughs> let us know in the comments. I'd love to know your input. And in the next part, I will talk about how many of each color I needed um, according to my calculations. I'll show you how to use a word do or document just to make up a little chart to figure out your placement, how much yarn you're going to need, yada, yada, yada. One other thing I wanted to mention as we go along here is you will see cat fur. Okay, please um, relax. You'll be all right. I spend a lot of time making things for sale. And now that I don't, um, I really don't worry about cat fur anymore. And it's just a liberating feeling. And so I try to pick it off, but I'm not going to be uptight about it. And I, um, I trust you won't either because, you know, life is so much more. Uh, if you can deal with these crappy ass nails, you can deal with a little cat fur. All right. This is just life um, at Becky's house. Okay, here is my setup that I did in Word to figure out the placement of my squares and how many I would need and everything. So this is the back here, B for back and F for front. I made a square and then I weighed the square. So down here. This is one square equals 60 groupings, which is, you know, the granny square little groupings of three. And a whole square is a half an ounce. And then I broke it down into um, proportions of cream color, brown, and then the main color. And that was like, you know, an estimate. So I could estimate how much to buy. So um, what I came up with was about right. Um, it basically just took one, I had to get one each of the different colors, and that was plenty, but on average about two ounces altogether. And then um, the cream color, I needed six ounces, which I think I used a little less than that, but um, that was a good estimate. And then the brown also, that was about right. So um, that worked out pretty good. I inserted a table, and, and then I colored it, obviously, but let me just show you real quickly how I did that. I made like 10 of these by the way <laughs> I changed it a million times to where I had like the design continuing through the back and everything but um in the end I realized I didn't have to be that much of a nerd I tend to make things more complicated than it really needs to be hey quit that um so yeah that's me and at some point I said Becky simplify what do you want the front to look like and I just didn't want them to match exactly at the shoulder I didn't want them to be you know, matching up that way. So I moved the rows down one. Right, here's the neck. Um, also, these are five inches. So that makes this 20 inches a lot from the neck to the shoulder, which was good for me. So I, you know, that's a factor as well. How big are your squares? And then how wide do you want your dealie to be? You know, and that's how you can gauge how many squares you need, you know, by the length. Insert a table. Okay, I know I wanted it. Then take the corner and just make it, try to make it square. Then I just take here and I say layout, table design, shading, and I pick the color, right, red. I actually, oops, I actually did try to pick colors that were close to the colors I bought, but okay, then you hear, boom, boom, and then just, oops, and then just fill them in. Highlight these, right, and then you can go to the border, okay, here it is. Actually, you can right click. I think that works too, but do no borders to start with. And then I'm going to do left border and bottom border. Whoops. Haha, <laughs> I did. I did it. There. See? Boom. Okay? That's how you do it. That's enough of that. Let's get crocheting. Okay, this to my mind is the classic pattern for a granny square. We start with a chain four loop, and then I'm gonna show you the invisible join, maybe you're doing it already, where we single crochet into the ring, 
And then I do a little maneuver, single crocheting from behind into that first single and kind of keep it loose. And that's gonna look like a double. And then we're gonna continue with two more doubles, chain two for the corners and so on until you have four clusters and get back to the beginning. Now to stay in the corner, when I get to the joining part, I'm gonna chain one and then work a single into that first double. And we have two loops on the hook. That's when I wanna add my new color, pulling the last loop through and then locking it in with the first part of our invisible join. I'll also try to show you how I weave in my ends as I go. Um, here the brown one I would actually weave into those top stitches first before I covered it, but that's basically the idea. I just cover it as much as I can, as far as I can, and that way I know when I trim it off it's safely tucked in, you know. So for round two, in each corner, chain two space, we'll work our three double crochet cluster, chain two, and another cluster, and then chain one between the clusters on the sides. When I have only one round until I want to continue this color, I like to carry it through if I can. I just try to work around the colored thread just enough so it's higher up for when I need it for the next round. It shows a tiny bit, but mostly on the back and that doesn't bother me. Round three is continued the same way, working two clusters into the corner spaces with two chains between and one cluster into the side spaces with one chain between and so on for the rest of the rounds. For the last round, I end with chain two and then slip stitch to my first double of the round and then that is the end. Now we'll just repeat that about a million times or rather uh, 64 times. <laughs> Okay, back to why we love our granny squares so dang much. The first thing that comes to my mind is they are just pure, wonderful, classic crochet, right? A granny square just brings to mind the 70s, Afghans, they definitely have a funky retro vibe and we love that. Just like this music, right? It's a little disco-y. Did you know in my fourth grade class for our Christmas pageant, we did the hustle? <laughs> Yes, we did. The second thing we love about granny squares is they are so much fun to make, right? Each square is just quick and easy, two stitches, you can whip right through them, but also there's so many ways to play with color and that's just a fun combo in my book.
next on my little list here is that granny squares are so fun to fit into different shapes and designs. It's like a crochet nerd puzzle, which is why I bought this um, vintage book, as I recall, to learn how to make them into sweaters, hats, slippers, and whatnot. Options are endless, really. So following my little chart from earlier, I laid out the two rows I'm joining so that I know they're in the right order. I'm using this single crochet join that goes through just one loop of each stitch. So it's kind of recessed between the squares a little bit. It gives a ridge, but not like a huge ridge, you know? And what I'm gonna do is join long rows of the squares across the front panel all in one direction and then we'll turn it and join them in the opposite direction. Start by holding two squares back to back and line up the stitches. At the corner, start in one of the chains and work a single into the two loops that are touching in the middle. So that's the back loop of the front square and the front loop of the back square, which in my head sounds confusing. So I just think the ones that touch, the loops that touch in the middle. <laughs> I also found it helpful to count the stitches and chains as I worked. It's really easy to get out of alignment with the loops, like hit one twice or whatnot. Even when I counted, I messed up a lot. So just a little tip for you. Another reason we love granny squares is they are just cute as a button. I mean, look how adorable they are, right? I can't explain it. It just is true. I don't know. And I have a few more uh, granny square benefits from my 70s granny square book here. By the way, this is not my fun surprise list. Okay, that's still coming. Um, one thing they say is they're portable. That's true, yep. Uh, thrifty, since you can use scraps of yarn, correct. And like I said earlier, here's my favorite quote from the book <laughs> that I totally agree with. Quote, a stack of granny squares can be shuffled and reshuffled until the arrangement satisfies your most demanding sense of design and color, end quote. Oh, hell yes, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Some high design going on here right now. I just love 70s craft books so much. Someday I'll do a video about my vintage craft library and why I think they're the best craft books you can buy. Okay, now I'm starting to join everything the other way. And when we get to the joint, I'll show you what I did there. There's a chain on either side of the joining stitch. So I worked a single into the chain just as we have been. And then into the joint stitch, I did a slip stitch and then single into the next chain, and then continue. I think the joints look good doing it that way. They seem to be really nice and flat, not puckery at all, so I was um, good with that.
finished panels, this front and back of my giant poncho. It looks really big <laughs> laying out like this, but it is, I mean, it's hefty. It's like wearing a big blanket. Um, and I am tall. I am five foot ten, so my arms are long. This comes about to my elbows, I think. But I really like it. I like the way the seams are looking. I do think they're going to mellow out a little as they stretch and stuff. They'll settle more into the groove, you know. You could steam it maybe. Like, don't press it, but just pass an iron over it with some steam and just enough to get it warm and wet and squish it down a little bit. I'm not really a blocking kind of girl. I'm not going to be blocking anything. I just don't do that. I'm lazy. That's it. I really love it. Have I mentioned that I really like it? I love it. Which is good because it's taking a really long time. <laughs> I thought I was just going to bust out this video for you. No, it's taking... Well, I already have the squares made. Yeah. It's taken a lot, but I'm enjoying it. It's really fun. Something different. And um, I'm definitely going to wear this. I'm excited to wear it. Okay, so next, shoulders, seams. And then that part will be done. And then I'm going to single around the edges just to finish up the edges nice. Woohoo! Rainbows! One thing I, I was going to say, too, is... I. If you've been following along with how I've been hiding my my um, yarn ends as I go, when I finish one of my squares, I have one string for each square to work in. When I get finished with a square, I know every single one of these can be trimmed off because I know I've woven them in enough. The rest of the ends, each of the one per square, I just worked into the joining stitches. And that's how I do it. That's how you don't go crazy. I mean, it's a little more tedious working through it, but it's so much worth it at the end. Now joining the shoulders, the joints are just a little different this time. Um, I did the same as before most of the way, but when I get to the actual joint stitch, I stabbed right into the teardrop and then through the other one in the back to get my stitch all the way through. And that's really gonna keep the shoulders a little stronger and get that um, center bridged where I want it. I'm gonna start doing the edges here so I just wanted to show you it's a little too big it's falling off on my shoulders so I think what I'm gonna do is skip skip the seam stitch to tighten it up a little bit and then I think I'll probably have to do a second round because there is a lot of space you know so I'll probably do a second round just to give it a little more edge and if I want to tighten it up anymore I can do that I like it. I love it. I just can see myself wearing this around the campfire in the summertime. And I probably am way too excited about this, but I've never made myself a granny square poncho, believe it or not. And it's so soft. <clears throat> okay, I'm getting ready to start my edge around the neck. I just realized I don't need to go into the back loops or whatever of this to do the edges. I can do it normal. It'll be great. So I'm going to start in this... Um, chain space and then I'm gonna do um, a single together into the joint stitch and then through both and that's kind of how I do it in my beer can hats too it turns the seam a little bit this way and incorporates it but I'm also skipping it and then space I mean I could skip both probably the spaces and the but I'm gonna do it this way so it's more gradual. And then I'm probably gonna do a second round and then decide how much more I wanna decrease it. But for now, I'm just gonna skip the joint stitch. 
<clears throat> in the way I just showed. And then the rest will be just straight single crochet. This occurs to me now that the stove will be noisy. It's winter, wood stove's on, it's noisy, it has a fan. I normally turn it off, but I forgot. So I'm gonna do two together. Okay, one in the space, one, and one sideways through this joining stitch. And then finish it. Then the next one will be the space then regular stitches, which is lovely because it took forever to do the joining with that weird stitch. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting to the V in the front uh, and I wanna show you right where to go. Here's the chain before the seam, right? And then there's two seams together right next to each other and then another chain. I'm gonna do two together, two together and see how that looks with the chain and the stitch like I have been and then the stitch and the chain. <laughs> good tight together I don't think it looks weird or anything puckery or anything okay now I'll carry on I'm doing my uh, second round here and what I decided to do was a double crochet just to make it thicker on the top because I really did need a little more space because it was still falling off so what I decided to do was only decrease at the shoulders and then the v-neck points Coming up. So these are the two that I decreased on. So two on this side, two on this side. That'll play. See how nice and flat it is now? Yes. On the shoulders though, I'm just gonna do one. This is more of a tight V, but on the shoulders I am gonna take, do just um, two together once on the shoulder. Perfect. See, when I got to the corner, I, I just skipped one. I did two together and what looked like the middle one. And I think it's laying just lovely. Come. As promised, 50 ideas for using granny squares. Go! Album cover, appliance covers, baby bib, baby blocks, baby bunting, bath mat, bed jacket, bed socks, birdcage cover, bookmark, cafe curtains, car seat, slip covers, cat mat, Christmas tree ornaments, Christmas tree skirt, uh, coasters, covered brick doorstop, very 70s, dog bed, doll clothes, glass cozies, golf club covers, hat band, headband, headscarf, insertions of various grannies and plain color curtains, <laughs> lampshade, lamp, lap robe, laundry bag, lingerie case, lounge slippers, men's one colored sleeveless sweater, very specific, mirror frame, mittens, patches on blue jeans, room divider, shawl, shoe bags for travel, stole, tablecloth, tea cozy, telephone book cover, <laughs> tennis racket cover, turtleneck dicky, upholsters for bar stools, for breakfast room seats, for food stools for patio furniture, balances, wall hanging, and washcloth. Woohoo! 